Hi, in this session, we are going to give a brief overview on clustering different types of data. We encounter various kinds of types of data. For example, the early clustering algorithm, most times we, the design was on numerical data. And the second type of data is category data, including the binary data that most people consider as also can be handled in categorical data a category. For example, gender, race, zip code, or market basket data, you will consider the data is discrete. There's no natural order. For third kind of data is text data. This is very popular in web, uh, in social media, on the web, or social networks. Uh, usually, if we consider a word as one dimension, then you're, we are handling very high dimensional data, but they are very sparse. Their value usually corresponding to word frequencies. The method to handle such data include a combination of k-means and agglomerative methods, topic modeling methods, or co-clustering methods. We are going to discuss this extensively later. Multimedia data is another kind of data needs clustering. Usually images, audio, video, those on Flickr and uh, YouTube actually are multimedia data. They are multimodal in the sense they have image, audio, video, in many cases they have text as captions as well. Uh, we can consider they are contextual data. They contain both behavioral and contextual attributes. For example, for images, we can consider the position of a pixel representing its context, the value representing its behavior. For video and music data, we can consider temporal ordering of the records representing its meaning. Time series data is another popular encounter data like in sensors, uh, stock markets, temporal tracking, or forecasting. Those tasks usually we handle time series. Time series, we usually consider data are temporarily dependent. Uh, they are consecutive. Usually, the interval is somehow equal. Okay. Like, uh, uh, f we can consider time as contextual attributes, data value as behavioral attribute. Uh, usually, such uh, analysis include correlation-based online analysis, like online clustering of stocks to find stock tickers or we use shape-based offline analysis. For example, we can cluster ECG based on overall shapes. Sequence data is another kind of data, usually in weblog analysis or biological sequence analysis or analyze the sequence, the system commands. This We can think the placement rather than time or the contextual attribute. That means where they are. Okay. Then the similarity function include Hamming distance, added distance, longest common subsequences. The clustering method we call sequence clustering may use suffix tree, may use generative model like a hidden Markov model. Stream data is another kind of data. Uh, stream data can be considered as a real time the data like a water flowing in and out. Uh, it may evolve a long time. It may have concept shifts uh, because stream coming and go. So we need a single pass algorithm rather than you can uh, see it again and again. And the typical method for stream clustering could be microclustering. That means we need to create efficient intermediate representation by some kind of microclustering methods. Graphs and homogeneous networks uh, is another kind of data. Uh, this then kind of data usually uh, so-called homogeneous networks. That means we consider networks as graphs, but nodes and edges actually are of one kind, one type. Actually, any kind of data it can be considered, can be modeled as a graph uh, with the nodes as different uh, attributes and entries and edge represent their similarity values. Okay. The typical method for handling graph clustering could be generative models, 
combinatorial algorithm like graph cuts, spectral clustering method, non-negative matrix factorization methods. Then a little beyond homogeneous network are heterogeneous networks. This kind of network consists of multiple types of nodes and edges, like a bibliographic data, hospital, you know, handling disease, patients, doctors, and treatments. Uh, to cluster different kinds of nodes and links together, there are some interesting algorithms like a net class algorithm. Uncertain data means the data may contain noise, uh, may have approximate values or multiple possible values. Usually we need to incorporate some probabilistic information like distribution or approximate values uh, where that will improve the quality of clustering. Finally, uh, recently there are lots of discussion on big data. That means we can model systems that may store and process very big data like web log analysis. Uh, usually, like uh, Google's MapReduce framework, is you, you have map function to distribute the computation across many machines. Then we have reduce function to aggregate the results obtained from the map step. So we can see the data is very rich. That's why the clustering is a rather sophisticated methodology, you know, trying to handle different kinds of data.